Hey guys, what's up? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today we're gonna talk about VORs, and this is gonna be a series of videos on VORs because unfortunately, VORs are pretty dang confusing, and they're something that a lot of student pilots struggle with. So we're gonna break it down into sort of smaller videos so hopefully you guys can digest it a little bit better. And unfortunately, you do have to know this stuff. The, the, the VOR network across the United States is still very integrated and, and in use. And if you don't have a GPS, you're gonna to have to use VORs for navigation. And on your check ride, it's almost certain that your your examiner is going to make sure that you are able to use VORs and traditional types of navigation in case your GPS goes out, your iPad dies, or something like that. And in this first video, we're gonna do just how the VOR works, the components of the VOR system, and then maybe we'll even get into just the general concepts of a VOR that you're going to see. And then in future videos, we'll get more into details on how to use them, how to read them, and things of that nature. Okay, so let's get started. The VOR system consists of a VOR ground station, which emanates the VOR signal to your aircraft. Now, this could be a VOR and have this symbol on your aeronautical charts, or it could be usually found on military sites, a Vortac, which has this symbol on your aeronautical charts. Vortacs usually have a DME, which we'll get to in a second. Or it could be a VOR DME, where the DME is, stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. The VOR signal from the VOR ground station is gonna be picked up by your aircraft through your VOR antennas on your vertical tail. And then that signal is gonna be sent through your aircraft to your VOR instrumentations. Now, most aircraft will have v two VOR instruments stacked on top of each other and two nav radios or VOR radios. Now, you see the VOR instruments stacked on top of each other here in blue, and then the two nav radios stacked on top of each other here in red. Now, you'll have nav one radio on the top here, which works with VOR instrument one on the top in the blue. And then you'll have nav two radio that works with VOR two instrument. So how do we get signals from a specific VOR station in our aircraft? How do we tune to a specific VOR station on the ground in our aircraft? Well, we do that using frequencies. Now here, let's say we're looking at VOR nav radio one inside our cockpit. And then behind this, you can see we have a sectional chart and you can see Oceanside VOR. And inside this nav communication box for Oceanside VOR, we have 115.3 listed. This is the VOR frequency. If we dial this frequency into our nav radio one, now VOR instrument one, which is tied to nav radio one, is gonna be looking for signals from the frequency 115.3, which is for Oceanside VOR. Now also inside this communication box is some Morse code. Right here you see dash, 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 dot, dash, dot, dash, dot. This Morse code is the test code that you will use to make sure your this VOR station, Oceanside VOR station, is actually operational. So what you wanna do before you use any VOR station is you wanna make sure you hear this test code to ensure that it's operational so you can trust it. And to do that, you're gonna pull on the knob, the knob here on your VOR radio that says pull 25K, you're gonna pull out on that and you'll listen to the Morse code. So how does the VOR work? How does the VOR tell us our relative position just from one ground station and the instruments in our aircraft? Well, what it does is it actually sends out two different signals sends out a reference signal, and then it sends out a signal for each radio. So here we have a VOR station right here in the middle. And then we have the compass rows, the VOR compass rows around it, where it shows each and every radial. So now let's explain what a radial is. A radial is a line drawn from the center of the VOR station pointed outwards on one of the degrees of the compass rows. So this one right here, it looks like it's about 045. That's a 045 radial. So if we were here with our aircraft, here with our aircraft, we would be on the 045 radial. This would be here. This would be the 120 radial. This would be the 0 radial, the 300 radial, and so on. So the VOR station has an antenna housed inside of this little cone thing on top of it. And that antenna spins around from zero in the clockwise direction, zero, 
all the way to 360. It spins around and it sends out signals as it's spinning around. And what it does is it sends out a signal at every single radial line. So it sends out a signal at one degree, two degree, three degrees, and so on, five, 10, 30, 60, 90, all the way around, it sends out a signal at each and every radial. And then what it does is it sends out an additional signal whenever it reaches the true north. So it, at each degree, it's sending out a radial signal specific to that radial. And then when it gets to zero, it sends out an omnidirectional signal that emanates in all directions. Omnidirectional means every direction. And that is sort of like your reference, the VOR reference signal. And it does that every time it hits zero, when it spins around and hits zero. So the time, and it's the same amount of time every time. So the time it takes this to spin around, get to zero, and send out that omnidirectional signal is the same time as the next time it does, right? It takes the same amount of time, and it's just like clockwork. Every time it sends out the signal when it reaches zero, and then in between at every single radial, it sends out a signal. So if we have an aircraft over here on the 060 radial, okay, 060 on this radial, this aircraft is going to receive two signals. It, when, when the VOR station antenna spins around and sends out the 060 radial, that aircraft is going to receive it. And then when it sends out its omnidirectional signal, when it reaches zero, that aircraft is going to receive it. Now, if time one or T1 is the time that the VOR signal is at zero and the time that the aircraft receives that omnidirectional signal and T2 or time two is the time that the aircraft receives the zero, six, zero radial signal, the difference between T2 and T1 is gonna be the time it takes for the aircraft to receive the omnidirectional signal and then receive the 060 signal. And what the VOR instrument inside the aircraft does is it, it knows that these times, it should be expecting a time to receive that omnidirectional signal and then receive the signal that you have dialed into your VOR. So if we have 060 dialed into our VOR instrument, our VOR instrument is going to be expecting to receive the omnidirectional signal and then a signal a specific a specific amount of time later according to 060. So it's always the same. So let's say it's two seconds for 060. So your VOR instrument would receive the the omnidirectional signal and then two seconds later receive the 060 radial and if it matches what it's expected two seconds in this case then your needle on your VOR radio or your VOR instrument would be centered because you're on the radial that you have dialed in 060. Now if we had 090 dialed in that time would be that expected time would be more. It might take three seconds. So the time you it takes to get the omnidirectional signal between the time it takes to get the 090 radial would be more than the time it takes to get the omnidirectional signal and the time it takes to get the 060 and so on, right? If we went 180, it would be double the time it takes to get the 090 radial. And your VOR instrument knows all these times and knows what to expect. So if we had 045 dialed into our VOR, but we're still sitting here on the 060 radial, we're still going to receive the omnidirectional signal at T1, and we're still going to receive the 060 radial, because that's the radial we're on, at T2. So all your VOR instrument sees is it sees, oh, it got the omnidirectional signal, and then it got the radial signal, and it took two seconds. And it says, okay, now is that what we expected for what we have dialed in, 045? And it's going to say, no, we expected to get that signal sooner. So it's going to have your needle on your instrument off-centered because it was not the expected time. It was sooner than the expected time. But if we were to have 060 dialed in, 
that expected time would actually match the real time that it took for us to get the signal. And because it would match, then it would center that needle. So that's how the VOR works. Let's get into a little bit more of the details of the VOR system that you'll use. So here is the VOR instrument face that I was talking about. And it's pointing right now to the course deviation needle. So this needle will move around to the left or to the right. And right now it's perfectly centered. So that means you are on the radial that you have dialed in. And that means the expected time of the two signals matches the actual time it took to get the two signals so your needle is centered. Then we have our course deviation markings. So these are these markings here. And each marking is two degrees off course. So if our line was here on the fourth line, that would be eight degrees off course to the right. That's if we're not reverse sensing. We'll get to reverse sensing in a little bit. But so depending on how far away your needle is to the left or right, you can use these lines here to determine what order of degrees you are off from your course. Then we have the Omni Bearing Selector. So this knob, when you, let me use red. This knob, when you turn this knob, it's going to turn this entire compass rows, all these numbers, so that the number up here at top, which right now in this example is 255, changes. So the whole compass rows is gonna turn when you turn this OBS, which is what we call the Omni Bearing Selector. And this, when I say what you have dialed into your VOR, that's whatever is up top shown right above that white triangle. So that's what you'll dial in. So in our example earlier, our aircraft was on the 060 radial. So we, we would wanna dial in 060 to get our needle centered so that the signal timing matches with what's expected for our 060 radial. Then we have a to and from indicator. And you see it says to here, and then it says FR here, which means from. And then the white triangle tells you whether you're to or from. We'll get into what that means. It just tells you which side, uh, whether you're on your radial side or you're not on your radial side. Again, remember we talked about you can still be on that line. You'll just be on the opposite side. That's what the to and from tells us. It tells us whether we're on that radial side or not. This is what most students get confused about. So don't worry if it takes you a little bit to get it, but it's important to know that because it can really screw you up. So that's the two from indicator. And then we already talked about the compass rows of radials that spins around when we turn the OBS. 